Hey, this is David with another TCAN video. Today we're gonna to be talking about liquid classes. Yes, everyone's favorite topic, uh, liquid classes. So let's get into it. Where liquid classes lives is right here under control bar. If you click on liquid classes, you can see all the different types of liquid classes that we have. So this liquid class that I've se selected is the Master Mix Free Single Covex. Keep in mind there's a different type of liquid class for the MCA versus the AIR. The AIR FCA has way more options than the MCA. The liquid class is broken up into two sections. There's the aspirate section and there the, there's the dispense section. Keep in mind, every time you make modifications to aspirate and dispense, this is a really common error. It's just for the tip that you select. Meaning, if you need to change it for three different sizes, guess what? You're gonna have to change it for three different sizes. So this is just for the tip that's selected. I can't stress this enough. It does not apply to every uh, tip volume. So today we're just gonna be working on the 50 microliter filtered as an example. So the sample volume here is just what it would look like at this sample volume. It doesn't mean that, hey, you're pipetting this volume. It just means like, hey, if we were, if we were doing a, a pipette of, um, you know, like say 20, uh, 30 microliters, this is kind of how everything would look. That's all. Pipetting speed is kind of self-explanatory. It's how fast you're going to be pipetting. The reason why you would want to pipette slower or faster is to make sure you're getting all the liquid out. If you're having too much retention, you want to maybe increase the speed. But if you have too much blowout, meaning liquid is flying around, then you want to decrease the pipetting speed. The delay is the percent at which you're gonna multiply the pipetting speed to kind of slow things down. So if you want things to be slower, then you can increase the delay up to 200%. Accuracy adjustment, that's kind of a, a, an interesting one. It's not really used too often, but it's like a compensation factor. So if like, for example, you want to, if you're noticing maybe the system's not quite pipetting 10 microliters and you wanna do an accuracy adjustment, I mean, there's two ways to do it, right? Like you can, increase the amount you volume volume but if you know you're missing a specific volume like say you have a very viscous sample and you're pipetting 20 microliters and you're only getting 18 then that's where you would kind of put in your accuracy adjustment multi pipetting is if you're going to like pipette multiple times from one aspiration if you want to think about it it's suck spit 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 right versus you know aspirate dispense aspirate dispense aspirate dispense it's do a big aspiration and then dispense, 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 okay? These are all very important functions here. You have your trailing air gap, you have your sample volume, and you have your leading air gap. And you can you can change these percentages here, right? If I wanted to increase the trailing air gap, I can I can do that, right? Or I can do a one microliter. You know, you can do what, what you want. The reason why you would want a trailing air gap is to prevent drips. If your sample is very drippy, then you want more air there to kind of try to prevent dripping from happening, right? A leading air gap is for blowouts. If you still have a lot of liquid retained, then that's where you want to increase the leading air gap. And, and I think those are the major, most important parts. Um, let's go into detection and positioning now. So if you're using the black pipette tips, those are actually conductive tips. If you want, you can CLLD, that's for using conductive tip. Conductive tips are used to sense the liquid, right? It's kind of like dipping your toe in a pool just to kind of see it's there. That's kind of what the, what the tips do. And you can determine if you have like a very conductive liquid, a medium or low, you can specify that. And you can tell it how low to go down and which position you want to. Well, this, um, Z, this doesn't matter anymore if you're doing conductivity because it's just gonna go from the top, right? And here's the, Here's the um, representation right here. You can have tracking, right? So what tracking does is it senses the level of the liquid as you go up and as you go down. So that's what tracking is. Tracking, retract supervision is like, say you're pipetting 20 microliters out. It will try to make sure that the expected height is where that uh, 20 microliters would be as it retracts. And if it's missing, then you'll get like an error. So retract supervision is just kind of make sure that, hey, whatever I spit out was actually spit out. Retract properties over here. This is for moving the speed. It's literally what it sounds like, moving the speed out of the well. So, you know, how fast is that pipette gonna come out of the well uh, after you aspirate? That's this function over here. Generally though, for me, I find that like, for most applications that I've seen, not using conductivity is, is much faster and, and better for the most part. The, there's maybe some certain applications that might need conductivity, but I find that more often than not, I'm using 
non-conductive methods. And then the Z offset here, the, it's a positive integer. So the higher the number, if you look over here, the higher the number, the, the greater the, the space above, right? So you can see that. And I like that there's that picture there that shows you. This is more intricate, so I'm not gonna get too much into this one, like the formulas, the microscripts. Most people are not really using these too much, but you know, maybe that might be a separate video. So now let's get into the dispense. Again, this is like a example of this sample volume. Acceleration is how fast you want to dispense. This is the top speed. So you can see here, you know, you kind of have a trapezoid. You have an acceleration, a plateau, and a deceleration. The reason why you would want to change the speed on the acceleration is if you kind of think about drinking out of a straw, if you drink too fast, you might pick up too many bubbles and that's not good. And the same thing with a deceleration. If you decelerate too fast, you might get too much residual volume in there. You're just tweaking parameters to make sure that you know, you're not introducing bubbles into the system and you're aspirating and dispensing everything that you want. And this trailing air gap after dispense, that's the blowout. So you can click that if you want the blowout. And again, it's the same thing from the aspirate. You have the same parameters for the detection and the positioning, and then the two formulas. So that's pretty much it. These variables, you wouldn't have to worry about. So, so I would say like pretty advanced topics would be variables and also formulas and microscripts. Generally, you're not using these very much at all. Um, again, if, if somebody wanted to see that, we could do a separate video. But whatever I've covered covers the vast majority of liquid classes. And just don't forget, you have to do it for each size. Anyway, that's pretty much it for liquid classes. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And hopefully this video was helpful for you. And this should get you um, to be able to use liquid classes for the vast majority of your applications. Hopefully it helped. If you have any comments, leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this type of content and you want me to create more. See you in the next one.